UFC Vegas 71 just recently wrapped up and it was epic. Sergey Pavlovich proved he's next up at heavyweight dismantling Curtis Blades in the first round. We're going to talk about each of the matchups on the card. Make sure you guys smash the likes and if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'm excited as hell. I want to start it off with the main event. We're going in reverse order today. Sergey Pavlovich versus Curtis Blades. My underdog lock of the week, Pavlovich, hits. Perfect prediction. First round knockout, which I called. So I'm riding super high off the big win. But also, just as a fan of Sergey Pavlovich, as a fan of high-level striking, this guy is a devastator. I think Pavlovich could compete in professional boxing. His hands are tremendous. Curtis Blades definitely can strike his ass off but ultimately Pavlovich is dangerous as they come works a stiff jab can eat good punches finds home to big strikes shown the takedown defense blade shot in Pavlovich stuffs the takedown and a lot of people were sleeping on Pavlovich on the floor they didn't think that he had the ground skills they thought that he would get taken down and dismantled Sergey Pavlovich is an Eagles MMA fighter okay Eagles MMA has tremendous wrestling you cannot doubt the takedown defense based on the one fight which was bad which was the Alistair Overeem fight which unfortunately didn't go his way he was 26 it was his UFC debut Overeem was number six in the world at the time I'm telling you Sergey's boxing blows my mind he controls range well. He can eat shots to land them. He's finding straights through the guard on Curtis Blades. Just annihilate some, drop some, finishes it up with a little bit of ground and pound. Blades was done. He was also finding uppercuts. Like Blades was nervous to level change because the uppercuts were going to be there. And Pavlovich just kind of kept him at bay and turned this into a striking match that Curtis Blades just couldn't match. There was no comparison to the actual precision with the boxing. Blades is thinking, oh, I hit him, I hit him. But Pavlovich is finding home to the thudding shots. You can see Blades wobbled a couple times before the fight even ended. So Sergey Pavlovich had, in my opinion, a 10 out of 10 performance. Yes, he has takedown defense. His boxing is the best in the heavyweight division right now, and we have to say he's number one contender. Stipe Miocic, John Jones is probably happening, right? They're talking about MSG. Sergey Pavlovich should be the next contender. He can be the backup for that fight, but definitely is the next contender. And I do not think John Jones, if he does beat Stipe Miocic, should retire because we have to find out now what happens. I think Pavlovich could be the guy to end Francis Ngannou on the feet. I seriously believe his boxing is that good. He would do better in pro boxing than Ngannou. And I think if he fought Francis Ngannou, there's a real chance that he would lay Francis out. I feel like this could be the baddest heavyweight on the planet right now. Hopefully, John Jones or Stipe, regardless of who wins that fight, hopefully, I hope that both of them would consider giving Sergey the next shot and not retiring and then some weird vacant title fight for Sergey Pavlovich because I think that Sergey deserves the opportunity to fight against a legend of the sport, that being either Stipe as champion or John Jones. You guys know I'm picking John Jones over Stipe. So Sergey Pavlovich and John Jones is a fight to me that's like a beautiful clash of styles because John has to get it on the floor. Obviously, if the Stipe fight is before and we see John Jones show improvements to his striking and more comfortability out there, maybe my opinion will shift. But right now, I think John Jones standing up with Pavlovich is a dead man walking. He needs this fight on the ground immediately as I almost smash what's next to me. Holy shit, the Bongskis almost fell. I feel like John Jones needs the fight on the floor early. Striking with Pavlovich is not the move. He will find shots and he will put your lights out. Curtis Blades got overconfident striking, he got laid out. Curtis, in my opinion, the game plan should have been ready, set, fight. Boom, boom, shoot. First 15 seconds, Curtis Blade should be shooting a takedown. If he misses one, he should shoot another. He should have been planning to chain wrestle all night. Reason he couldn't is he doesn't have great chain wrestling. Curtis Blade does have, you know, decent shots, but he's also not like super quick with his shot. You saw how he shot on Sergey. It's not a lightning speed takedown. Even in the small cage, Pavlovich is black it back and blades up, just forcing him towards the back of the cage. Sergey Pavlovich looks so good, guys. I genuinely think this could be the baddest man on the planet. I need to see him versus John Jones or Stipe, but probably John Jones. In a perfect world, we'll also get him versus Ngannou at some point. Bad man right here. Huge win. Epic performance. The boxing is top tier. That Russian boxing is always off the charts. I'm telling you, I think Sergey could be a boxer if he wanted to. If he said, yeah, I'm doing pro boxing, I actually think he would succeed at a pretty top tier level. I don't know about being the best in the world in pure boxing, but I definitely think he could succeed at a top level. 
beats Curtis up, man. First round KO. Could not be happier for Sergey, and also just could not be happier in general because underdog lock came through. And honestly, I'm a big Sergey Pavlovich fan, especially after this sports. I was already becoming a big fan. I knew about him when he fought over him, and I was like, oh, who's this savage? Oh, damn, he lost. Took some time off. You kind of forget about him. He's coming back. I'm like, damn, Pavlovich is a straight killer. He's a straight killer, guys. Sergey Pavlovich is that guy. Lays out Curtis Blades. Don't forget the name. This is the guy that should be fighting for the belt next. He's the more deserving number one contender, maybe, that you could say than even Stipe. But ultimately, Stipe never got his rematch versus Ngannou. Even though, you know, it's a total different title picture now, I guess Stipe deserves it. But the real deal number one contender is Sergey Pavlovich, at least after Stipe. He deserves a shot. Because he just fucked up Curtis Blades, who's a menace in the division. Co-main event. Bruno Silva. Comes through huge. Pick flip for me. I was on Brad earlier in the week, and I don't know, I felt some at Wayans that said Bruno by knockout. Flipped it, and what happens? Bruno lays him out. Bruno Silva looked good as fuck. He was finding big power shots, drops Brad. I know they talked about it being a little bit early, but ultimately still a knockout win. Brad Tavares on the other side was looking good early, didn't have the same speed as Bruno. Hits hard, strong guy, but doesn't have that quickness. Bruno Silva was finding shots through the guard, and he gets a KO win, and you know what? Bruno Silva, I do think, fought that GM3 fight injured because he looked way more devastating in this matchup here. That Brad Tavares chin, I'm telling you, it's a 6.5. He takes a good shot, but he can get laid out. Bruno's in a good spot. Big win against Brad Tavares? Like, it almost eliminates the loss to GM3 because, like, a Brad Tavares win is legit. The UFC obviously behind him, giving him this big shot. So impressed by Bruno Silva. I think big fights on the horizon. Obviously, Brad Tavares towards the upper echelon of the rankings, but not necessarily. I don't think he was, you know, actually ranked. I'm like 99% sure he wasn't. Now I got to look up the rankings over here. I don't got him on screen. I got him on the phone over here. Let's see. Middleweight rankings. Yeah, Tavares was unranked. I can imagine a scenario, though, where he's, he's close. One more and then a ranked contender. I don't have an exact name, but Bruno Silva looked good. Real good. Featured bout, unfortunate, unfortunate. Bobby Green, Jared Gordon, what happens? Headbutt knockout. Doesn't count. Gordon was actually touching him up a bit on the feet, though. Bobby Green was getting tested with the hands. Gordon gets cracked with a devastating headbutt because obviously Southpaw Orthodox. Down goes Gordon. Green with brutal follow-up, flat lines Gordon. But it was a headbutt that ended him. It wasn't a clean KO win. Bobby Green and Gordon should probably run it back in four months. Ultimately, I think the UFC might decide to do something else with Bobby Green, especially if he's ready to turn it around quicker than that because, you know, he didn't take significant damage in this fight. But it's so unfortunate for Jared Gordon. Loses a controversial decision to Patty the Batty, gets knocked out with a headbutt and is in a no contest here in a fight that he was looking pretty good in with Bobby Green as a big dog. That's the fucking fight game. No contest. We'll see. Bobby Green is retired, though. From now on, it's going to be king after this fight. All right. Lucindo Brogan Walker. Oh, my gosh. One-sided, ass-whooping. Brogan Walker got touched up. I thought she might have a chance as an underdog. Uh, yeah, I thought fucking far wrong. She decided to try and strike with Lucindo and also had nothing for her in the wrestling department and got absolutely picked apart for three rounds. Lucindo's a problem. At 21, I cannot imagine how good she's going to be at 25. She could be a top contender at some point. Not yet, but at some point. Huge win for her. I was impressed. Moving down the card, Jeremiah Wells. This was a banger. Matt Selmersberger looks like he has Jeremiah Wells out of the fight in the first 15 seconds. He stunned him in the first five. Multiple knockdowns in the first round. Wells looks out of it. Then at the end of the round, Wells got him down, Selmersberger, and is unloading with ferocious ground and pound and just beating the shit out of him. Second round, you start seeing more of the same. On the feet, Selmersberger will hurt Wells, but Wells will land takedowns. Third round, same type of thing. Selmersberger was able to find big shots and drop Wells, which in my opinion, we're like, okay, Jeremiah Wells' striking skill set. Let's drop what it actually, I thought it was here, it's probably here. But his grappling skills of like, yeah, it's decent. Pretty fucking good. Jeremiah Wells is a game competitor. Black belt in jiu-jitsu. Strong wrestling game. Strong as fuck in general. Power in his hands for sure, but a little bit hittable down the center against some of these more slick strikers. Where does he go from here? He said he wants a ranked opponent. Well, the welterweight rankings are very hard to get a ranked opponent in. Michelle Pereira is fighting 
against Wonder Boy. Masvidal is retiring. I don't think they give him Jack Della Maddalena. Michael Chiesa, I don't think so. I don't think he's getting a ranked opponent next time out. Maybe they gave him Neil Magny, but that'd be a rush. I think Jeremiah Wells is going to need another tough contender before those rankings. I know he's 36, though, so it's now or never to really get to that next level. He needs one more, unfortunately, but he needs one more. Matt Selma's burger, tough as fuck, though. Loses a hard-fought fight. Ends up being a split decision, too. To end out the prelims, we had Christos Yagos killing Ricky Glenn in a minute 35. I thought Rick Glenn was going to land some nice left hands. He got fucked up on the feet. Christos Yagos ripped him apart with shots, dropped some out, fight over, good stoppage because Glenn was going down and he, like, face plants. He was finished. Christos Yagos is dangerous on the feet, dangerous on the ground. Obviously, I knew this fight was a fucking crazy pick em fight. Like, I, I was like, I ain't, I'm not betting this one. This was just one of those fights. Sit back and enjoy because, to be honest, it's just chaos going to ensue. And Christos Yagos gets to win. Good W. Montel Jackson kills Ronnie Yaya. This was a perfect pick, but it was also a minus 600 favorite, so I can't really be flexing it that hard. I'll flex the main event, but not this one. Montel Jackson pieces him up with the fucking punches and knocks him out in the first round. Ronnie Yaya had zero for him on the feet. On the ground, you know, he was trying to hold the arm and maybe look for an arm bar, but as soon as there was separation, Montel Jackson ripped him to fucking shreds. Ripped him to fucking shreds. Beautiful win for Montel Jackson. I think Montel's really good. He's coming into his own takedown defenses there. Long southpaw. Crazy reach. 135 pounds with a 75 and a half inch reach. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, he had the goods for Yaya, which everybody thought he did. So that's the fight. Good win for, you know, Montel though. Before we had Norma Dumont and Carl Rosa. I, I get how they scored it for Norma, but Rosa had way more volume than her and definitely won the third round. But then Carol Rosa gets a, or excuse me, Norman Dumont gets a split. But Carol Rosa definitely won the third. I can't really complain about that though. <coughs> excuse me. It's not. There's nothing to complain about for me on this fight. It was a lackluster fight with okay moments, and then Rosa finishing real strong. Norman Dumont with a lot of control time in the clinch, backing her up, hitting her with okay shots. That's the fucking fight game. That's how it goes. Carol Rosa bleeding a bit. Norma Dumont's number one contender at featherweight of a division that doesn't really exist. What's the point? She needs to maybe get down to 35. If she can't make that weight, well, featherweight women's is not a weight class in the UFC. I know Nunes has the belt, but it's like a placeholder title at this point. Maybe she gets a title shot versus Nunes next. I have no idea. This division doesn't really exist. Mohamed Usman Jr. Tafa, first round. Junior Tafa was a fucking menace in the first round. Ultimately has no grappling off of his back. He showed us in the second and third. When Usman takes him down, he controlled. Tafa landed good strikes on the feet. And even late in the fight, went after Usman with like 10 seconds left. And, you know, stunned him a little bit. Stunned him multiple times on the feet. Usman, his wrestling is solid. His top control is okay. Never goes for the finish. Very, I guess never goes for the finish is not the right term. But he doesn't necessarily push for the finish. He's a guy that is going to control dominant position and grind out a win. Which is fine. He's going to win fights. Do it. That's fine. Ultimately, on the feet, though, he didn't necessarily have his feet under him a lot. His striking is very sloppy and weird. I feel as though sometimes his feet aren't under him. He hits real hard, and if he finds your chin, he'll let you out. But these more crisp strikers or the guys with takedown defense are going to give Mohamed Usman a lot of problems at the higher level of the heavyweight division. Ultimately, here, Junior Tafa, he takes him out. Tafa only at four pro. Tafa, good kickboxer. No grappling off his back just yet. They'll keep him around, but he needs a good amount of work. Congrats to Usman on the W. Next fight on the card, William Gomes and Francis Marshall. Competitive split. I had first, second round Gomes, but I could have saw, okay, maybe I could see them giving uh, Marshall the second. Definitely the first. And then third round was all Marshall. I don't know how Gomes doesn't tap from these rear naked chokes. They look locked in. Was able to touch him up from distance a bit. Nice low kicks. Nice kicks in general for Gomes. Ground skills are solid up until late, so that showed the gas tank was a little bit affected. Toughness unreal, the dude doesn't tap. And he gets a split decision win over a game dude on the come up at 24, who was 7-0. But we got to pump the brakes. We're not flying him up the rankings. There's a lot of work left to be done for Gomis. 25, you have plenty of time to make those adjustments. Good performance, competitive fight. 
I'm not going to complain about the split, but it also wouldn't have blown my mind if it would have went Marshall's way. Ultimately, I thought it was a close matchup. That was really a coin flip. At the end of it, I thought any man could have gotten it, and it went the way of William Gomez. And hey, I got the pick right, so I'm happy with the dog. Brady, he's standing in the first fight, overcoming some real adversity to finish weird. Like, the end of this fight was odd to me because Batagral Dana is against the cage, and Brady's just peppering him with shots, and then the ref jumps in and stops it. And, I mean, Dana had some dangerous moments. He was in a deep rear naked choke at one point. But ultimately, Brady's toughness and youth really drove him through the fight. Gets a really late finish at the end of the fight. When we thought Dana might steal it, I was super happy that he stayed one. There was no quitting him. He's tough as they come. And he was a live dog that came through. Congrats to Brady Heast. And still give him some time to develop. But I'm telling you, he's getting better and better each fight. This Tercios fight, we can't judge him based on that anymore. He beat Patrick Gural Dana. He beat Fernie Garcia. I'm telling you, the ceiling, very high on him. He's super young. Plenty of time in the game. I think he'd beat Ricky Tercios in a rematch too. Because I think Dana Batagoral would probably lay out Ricky Tercios. Good fight for Brady Heastan. Good win. Good comeback. Now, I do want to review the picks. All right? Let's check them out. Started off 1-0 with the underdog Brady Heastan. Kept going with fire. 2-0. Two dogs in a row. William Gomez wins. Mohamed Uzman. L. Because I had Tafa. Carl Rosa. L. Because Norma Dumont won. So then what are we? Uh, two and two. Montel Jackson wins. High confidence pick comes through. Let's go. Three and two. Most people's high confidence picks. Ricky Glenn. I didn't have confidence in him. I didn't throw a bet on him. I just said, hey, let's see what happens. Yagos beats him. We finish out the prelims three and three. And then Jeremiah Wells wins a hard-fought decision over Selma's Burger. Brings us to four and three because I picked Jeremiah Wells. I had a brain fart and really had hope in Brogan Walker's ground skills. And boy, was I fucking wrong. Way off on this one. Terrible call. Lucindo proved me wrong. I will not doubt you again. My apologies, Lucindo. We then go to four and four. We have a no contest with Bobby Green. I picked Bobby Green. We got a no contest. Four, four, and one no contest. Pick flip to Bruno Silva after originally picking Brad Tavares. That's why you watch the Way and Recap show every Friday because I go in depth and sometimes pick flips happen because I get these certain feelings. Bruno Silva gets it done. Knockout. Perfect call in that fight. Main event. Lock of the week. Underdog lock. Sergey Pavlovich. Knockout in the first round. Perfect call as well. So, I mean, one dog, two dog, three dog, four dog. Overall record. Six wins, four losses, one no contest. Four of my wins are underdog wins. So, I got to be happy as fuck with that. We hit heavy on the dog, so I'm... I'm happy. I'm happy. Good profit on the fucking dogs. I hope you guys cashed out too. I hope you guys played some of these dogs. Ultimately, best way to be betting it, throwing down on dogs. But I picked those dogs not just because they're dogs, but also I think they're going to win the fights. And sometimes, you know, the bookies, they throw the wrong lines out to sway your mind. Follow what you're feeling. Don't, don't fucking just go, oh, the line says this guy's the favorite. Let me bet him. He's going to happen. The dogs come through. The dogs come out with fire. And the best way to bet is finding the dog. So let's keep sniping them out as we head into next week. I'll be dropping a breakdown for UFC Vegas 72 tomorrow. Make sure you guys smash the likes on this breakdown. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And also let me know in the comments what you thought of me going in reverse order, starting with the main event and then finishing out with the prelims as opposed to the contrary. I was hype on the main event. I wanted to do it that way so I could keep that momentum going. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Smash the likes. If you're new, subscribe. Drop a W in the comments to boost that algorithm. Plenty of content dropping all week. As I said, videos every day or live streams. Keep tuned in. Stay. Post notifications. Turn them on. Much love. Another beautiful card in the books. And I hope you guys had a great week with me. And we uh, you know, start fresh tomorrow. Much love, people. See you all soon. Peace, everyone.